Welcome to Cyber C Tech Review. Today, I'm gonna to be doing a review of the Scepter C275B-QWD168. I'm gonna go over the pros and the cons and my real life experience that I've had with this monitor. And if at any point during the video, if you wanna check out this exact same monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK, and Canada. I do got you guys, but let's jump into the video. All right, now right off the bat, this is a 27 inch 1440p monitor. This is a good PPI or pixels per inch. So how clear text is gonna be, how clear the game's gonna be. It's pretty dang good at 108. So that means 108 pixels per inch. So gaming in this is gonna be crisp. Text is gonna look crisp if you're doing some more kind of like document type work. This is also a VA panel or vertical alignment panel and it is curved, which is really cool. Now the curve is not crazy, it's not insane. Nothing like Samsung does, but it definitely helps with immersion and it just takes the eye strain off a little bit. I like my monitors curved and I would always take a curved screen over a flat one. All right, now refresh rate. This thing actually gets a bump above the norm, which is actually becoming the new normal and the industry standard, which is 165 Hertz. So this goes all the way up to 165 Hertz. It used to be that the normal was 144 Hertz, but we're slowly seeing that the normal is now becoming 165 Hertz. So 144 Hertz is kind of going away and 165 is becoming that new normal. So they are keeping with the industry, which is a really good thing. This is high enough to be able to do some competitive gaming. Obviously this is not 240 Hertz, but you're getting into levels where it makes a very slight difference with how high you get. So 165 Hertz, pretty dang good. And if you wanna do some competitive gaming like Warzone, something like that, you're not gonna have a problem with it, especially if you're hitting those high frames. All right, but a huge thing, probably the biggest pro, one of the biggest pros of this monitor is the brightness. This thing absolutely blows it out of the park with 440 nits. Now for VA panels, 27 inch VA panels in this price range, we don't typically see high brightness. In fact, there's a lot of them that have pretty low brightness at like 250 nits, which is something that I do typically not recommend doing that unless you're looking at a much larger screen or if you just game in the dark, but this one bumps it all the way up to 440 nits. They could have done 350, gotten away with it, but they bumped it all the way up to 440. This thing is super bright. I am super impressed. But yeah, not only does this thing make games look nice and vibrant and beautiful, but if you're gaming in a bright room or in daylight, uh, there's not gonna be any reflections. This does have a matte display, so you pair the 440 nits of brightness with that matte display, and what you get is practically no reflections at all. I've never had any reflections with this that are like super noticeable or anything, even with all of these huge lights on in the studio. So yeah, I think uh, 440 nits is pretty awesome. 400 nits is like very good. 440 is just like, okay, let's just go over this a little bit. So yeah, huge pro is brightness. So if that's big for you, this is gonna be a good monitor. Let's talk colors. This thing actually does a really good job. This hits 99% of the sRGB color space, which is actually really good. If it was over that, you're gonna have some oversaturated stuff going on. But this just hits 99% of the sRGB color space, which it actually was like very surprising to me. Now, we're not seeing the DCI P3 color space, but in this monitor, in this price range with a VA panel, it's really good to have 99% of the sRGB color space. So I'm really, really impressed with that. But on top of all of that, this thing actually outputs 10 bits of color, which is awesome. Now, I think this is using FRC or frame rate control in a natively 8-bit panel to then output the 10 bits of color. But Whatever the fact may be, you can still output 10 bits of color, which is really cool. All right, the contrast ratio. This might be a huge reason why you're looking at this VA panel rather than something like an IPS. Now, big difference is gonna be IPS panels. Typical IPS panels are gonna be about a thousand to one contrast ratio. Now, typical VA panels are pretty much 3000 to one. This one bumps it up to 4000 to one. Now, we've seen VA panels go 5000 to one, 6000 to one. Uh, however, 4001 is quite good. You're gonna get really deep blacks. Now, if you compare this side by side to an OLED, it's not gonna be OLED deep blacks, but when you're in a dark room and it goes like black screen, it's gonna seem really, really dark in the room. So that's really nice. And yeah, quite a good contrast ratio. All right, but let's talk response time and ghosting. And this is where I've been listing a lot of pros, a lot of things that I love about it. This is something that I don't necessarily love a whole ton about it, but let's go over this because this might be a deal breaker or maybe not a deal breaker for you. So the response time and ghosting, this has a one millisecond MPRT. That's what it's advertised as. Now MPRT or motion picture response time is not the gray to gray response time, which is a much harder figure to get. So how does that equate to ghosting? Well, there is definitely ghosting on this monitor. Pretty much any VA panel that you get 
you're gonna have some ghosting. Now, I went through all of the different response time settings and tested them all equally, and the best one to do is the fastest setting, which I think is fast. I think there is off, low, medium, and then high. So do the highest setting for this one. This causes no pixel overshooting or inverse ghosting. It just decreases the ghosting uh, quite a bit from off to fast. So definitely when you get this, it will be set in medium, change that response time or the overdrive setting to fast. Now, personally, I didn't find the ghosting to be a massive issue. When I'm doing things like gaming, even fast paced games like Warzone, I never really found it to be that much of a problem. I didn't really was like, oh my God, there's ghosting in the game. I didn't really notice it that much. However, where I did notice it is when I'm scrolling through a black page, like a blog with a black background with white text, that's when you start scrolling and you can't really read the text when you're scrolling fast. So that's when you're gonna kind of notice it. However, that's just VA panels for you. And if you're someone that really picks up on ghosting and it's just like crazy and it makes you really angry, probably not the monitor for you. However, most of you guys probably won't notice this too much, especially in game. And we will talk about if the ghosting is worth it at the end of the video in the verdict. So definitely stick around to that. But let's talk about the menu system because this is a huge upgrade that they did. So previously, Scepter's menu system, pretty, pretty terrible. The actual controls of the menu system, there was like five buttons or four buttons and it was just like God awful. It was so hard to learn. However, the new style is one single button in the middle and then four arrows around it, which is a much, much better system. It's so much easier to use. The actual menu system is the same. It's not too pretty, but it's functional. Uh, but now the controls actually work really well and easily. So that's a massive upgrade. Now let's talk VESA compatibility because this is kind of an interesting with this monitor. This monitor itself doesn't actually have any VESA mounts. It actually comes with a little bracket that actually screws into the same place that the stand that it comes with does. So you actually take the stand off, put this VESA mount bracket thingy on it. It's very easy, screw it in with one screw. And then you have a 75 millimeter by 75 millimeter base mount. So when you get this in the box, it will come with the mounting bracket for a base mount. So very easy to do. So if you do want to mount this, it is compatible with 75 millimeter by 75 millimeter base mount. Now the internal speakers, it does have them. Are they any good? They're better than some other internal speakers that I've heard on monitors, but they're not anything that's going to blow your socks off by any stretch of the imagination. They're great if you want to use them in a pinch or if you're like watching a tutorial on YouTube, or if you need to like listen to like your class or something like that. Um, or if you just don't have speakers, you only use headphones and you just need speakers for like a minute or two or a couple minutes or something like that. They definitely work for something like that, but they don't sound fantastic. All right, ports include two HDMI 2.0, two DisplayPort 1.4 and a three and a half millimeter audio out. And that's it. But that's actually a pretty good selection. You get two DisplayPort 1.4s and two HDMI 2.0s. Obviously you're gonna get 144 Hertz of 1440p through the HDMIs and you're gonna get full 165 Hertz with the DisplayPort connection. All right, stand and build quality. That just did a really good job with this. A ton of metal construction. Everything feels really, really, really solid. So yeah. They did a great job. It has height adjustability, it has swivel, and it has tilt. There is no rotation, but I'm not knocking it too much for that because I don't think many people are gonna have a curved monitor rotated 90 degrees, so yeah. But all the movements actually feel very premium and better than their previous other monitors that I've used. All right, and lastly, before the verdict is the RGB on the back. This does have quite a bit of integrated RGB on the back of this monitor. It looks really cool if you look at it from the back of the monitor, but if you're not looking at it directly from the back of the monitor, it's kind of gimmicky. Uh, now, in a dark, totally dark room, it actually will shine against the wall, which is something I didn't expect. So it actually will give a little bit of a glow if you're in a totally dark room. I mean, it's gotta be like pitch black and it probably will shine against the wall, but with all of my RGBs everywhere and this room's pretty bright with RGBs everywhere at night, you don't really see it too much, but it is there if you guys don't have any RGB. It's, you know, something that you don't need to invest in right away. All right, but the overall verdict is the great colors, great brightness and contrast ratio that really set it apart from the competition and the price of only 330 bucks make it really, really good bang for your buck. This thing is an absolutely awesome monitor and I couldn't recommend it more. Again, if you wanna check out this monitor, there's Amazon links below for the US, UK and Canada. I do got you guys, but yeah. I absolutely love this monitor for 330 bucks. It's quite a good deal. Yes, there is some ghosting, but that's really the only con with this monitor. And if you're someone who doesn't really notice ghosting in game, it's not anything insane. I would definitely recommend this monitor. You get that amazing brightness, uh, which really changes the panel up. And overall, it's just a pretty panel to use. I've used it for gaming quite a bit now, and it's been quite nice. 
If you guys enjoyed this video and it helped you out, help me out and throw a like below. And if you enjoy monitor reviews and gaming monitor reviews or monitor accessories, those are the only videos I do here on Type-C Tech Reviews. But yeah, please consider subscribing below. This was Type-C Tech Reviews and I'll see you guys in the next video.